What's up everybody, Ronald back with another optimization guide. This time we're focusing on PUBG. In this video, we're gonna take a look first at Windows itself and how to make sure that Windows is actually optimized before you even launch PUBG because this has a huge effect on how PUBG runs on your computer. After that, we're gonna dive into some PUBG specific graphic settings to go over some commonly misconfigured things and also explain to you what some of the settings mean and how they can affect your graphics card and its performance while playing PUBG. Before we get started, there's chapter markers down below in the description so you can jump directly to a section if you want for reference. And I also know that this will probably generate a lot of questions and I wanna let you know that we're here for you. You can join the XP Media Discord, which is extremely active. Lots of people hanging out in the hardware section. Happy to talk about your setup. You can find me on Discord directly there. Send me a DM. Happy to talk to you about what you have going on. And of course, you can leave a comment below with a specific question and we can get some community engagement there as well. And one final ask, if you find this video helpful, please hit the thumbs up. And if you find our content useful, go ahead and subscribe to the channel. Let's dive in. The first thing I wanna talk about when it comes to optimizing your computer is actually your graphics card itself, but the driver specifically. You need to make sure whether you're running a Radeon or whether you're running an Nvidia card that you're always running the latest and updated drivers. I wanna show you quickly where to find the most updated drivers for each type of card. The first place would be to go to NVIDIA's website. If you go to NVIDIA.com and click on drivers, you can find and enter the specific card you have and download the specific driver that you need. Or you can actually download the GeForce Experience and it will update your driver for you. You'll just have to log in, create an account. It's pretty simple. If you have a Radeon card, you need to go to AMD's website and do the same thing. AMD will have you click on graphics and then find your particular graphic card, hit submit, and then download the drivers. All you do is run the file, you hit express installation, and boom, you're done. That is a very simple and easy way to make sure that your software is up to date to the point where you're giving PUBG the best chance to run from a software perspective. Now, I wanna take a few minutes to dive into some Windows settings itself. And these Windows settings are things that everybody should check because PUBG cannot run edit the max amount of frames in game if Windows itself is not configured to let it do it. So the first thing we're gonna check is we're gonna right click anywhere on your open desktop and you're gonna select display settings. And when that box comes up, you're gonna to get to your display settings windows. Now in my particular computer, I've got multiple displays. So I'm gonna pick my main primary gaming monitor and I'm gonna hit advanced display settings. If your panel supports 144 megahertz, you will see it here. If your panel supports 120 megahertz, you'll see it here. Or most commonly, if your panel supports 60 or 59.97 megahertz, you'll see it here. Now, you might be in a situation where you say, I have a panel that runs at 144 megahertz, but I'm not seeing it set as 144 megahertz. Now, the first thing you're gonna wanna check is click on display properties and then click on monitor. And there's a drop down box here that's probably set incorrectly. As you can see, you have multiple options here. You're gonna to wanna to pick 144 megahertz because this is going to tell your display that, okay, I can run at the high refresh rate. It's gonna tell Windows that your and your graphics card, all right, we're ready to go for our maximum amount of frames that this panel can support. Now, the next thing that we actually wanna check is power settings in Windows. This is extremely common to be overlooked because it's not something that by default everybody thinks about. As a matter of fact, on most pre-built computers, it comes set incorrectly to get the most performance out of a game. So let's click on power and sleep. And what you wanna make sure here is you click on advanced power settings and it's the power plan that is the issue that most people run into. Now I'm running an AMD Ryzen CPU. So I have a couple of Ryzen specific power plans that AMD provides. If you're running an Intel CPU, you're not going to see an AMD Ryzen high performance power plan here. But if you're running an Intel CPU, you can still run high performance and be just fine. 
if you're running an AMD Ryzen CPU, depending on the level of processor that you have, you may only see AMD Ryzen balanced. That's the one you want to check instead of checking high performance. If you click on Ryzen Balance, there's specific settings that are specific to AMD that will help you get the most out of your Ryzen CPU. So to recap, if you're running Intel, make sure you click on high performance, straight power plan. If you're running AMD, if you have the option to click on AMD Ryzen High Performance, use that. If you don't, use the option for AMD Ryzen Balanced. Now the next setting I wanna take a look at is actually your mouse. There's one critical important setting in your mouse that can totally throw off your FPS game. So if we click on mouse settings and we click on additional mouse options, and then we click on pointer options, there is a hidden option in here called enhanced pointer precision. And enhanced pointer precision takes your mouse cursor and make it move faster as your mouse cursor travels farther on the screen. Now you don't want this in PUBG because what is going to end up happening is if you have to move large amount of degrees in either direction, your precision is going to be quite a bit off when you go to try to aim because you're going to think that you're moving your gun or scope or whatever in a certain amount of space. But because the inertia is set in windows to make your mouse behave this way, as you move your mouse of larger amount of travel distance on the screen, it's going to make the aim in the game go way wacky in different directions and you don't want that so you want to make sure this enhanced pointer precision is unchecked very common thing that a lot of people miss the next thing i want to talk about is memory speed and i want to make sure that you are getting the most out of the memory that you have in your computer if you're using a modern computer on an amd ryzen based machine you're going to be able to go into your BIOS and make sure that you're using something called an XMP memory profile. And the result of that will be that when you open Task Manager and you look at your memory speed, it will say the correct speed, and which in my case is 3600 megahertz. Now you may ask, what does this option look like? It's going to look in the BIOS a little bit different depending upon motherboard manufacturer. I can show you what it looks like for a gigabyte Aurorus board. For gigabyte, it's a simple thing to change. It's right on the main screen and you look under the DRAM status and you click on XMP profile one. Your memory speed will then go from being limited to whatever the RAM itself is capable of actually doing. In my particular case, it's set to DDR4-3600. This is an incredibly important thing because it's another one of those no money upgrades. If you have a Ryzen based system and your memory speed is not showing the correct speed in task manager in windows, go into your BIOS, check to make sure that you have XMP memory profile enabled. It's a no money upgrade that'll make a huge difference in PUBG. Next, I wanted to take a minute to directly talk to overclocking. If you're going to overclock your graphics card or overclock your CPU, it has effects on how PUBG will run or any other game for that matter. If you have a Ryzen based computer, AMD makes a software called AMD Ryzen Master. And what this software allows you to do is to safely overclock your system. They'll give you some auto options for doing this and you just click on auto and it will do it safely. You also can do it manually but you may create some instability in your system. If you wanna guarantee that your system is not gonna create any instability in game, because even with an auto option selected for Ryzen or in Intel's case, if you buy an unlocked Intel Core i7 or i9 chip, you still have to manually select overclocking options. Even with settings which are relatively benign and safe, overclocking inherently creates instability in whatever is running on the processor. So if you want to create the most stable environment to play PUBG, set your overclocking to zero and let your processor do its thing the way it was designed to do. This also goes for overclocking your video card. It's very popular today to use Precision XL from Nvidia to overclock your video card. Keep in mind that whenever you overclock your video card, there are some Nvidia cards that are designed to be overclocked a little bit and you can do that safely. But again, keep in mind that to get the most stability 
out of your video card and get the best gameplay experience, you're going to want to keep your overclocking to a minimum or none at all, specifically when it comes to playing PUBG or other graphics intensive games. Now I'd like to talk about a couple of utilities that you have available to you to help your ping if you're having specifically high ping issues. There's a utility called Haste. It has a free option. It also has some paid options and what it actually does in the back end is it basically creates a VPN tunnel direct to the closest Amazon node to you and then allows you to speak directly to the PUBG servers in a way that actually speeds up your connection. And this is very useful if you're in a part of the world that has internet connection issues or if you're in North America specifically and you're trying to play PUBG but you're in a more rural setting and you're having some internet slowdowns Haste may be a way to help you get around some ISP issues. And this actually is not limited to just rural or out of an urban area issue. If you're in a high pop urban area, you may actually have an ISP that is routing your traffic on the internet in a way that increases your latency. So Haste is a good option to try if you're experiencing high ping times or desync and you think that it's because of your internet connection. Give Haste a try. In this next section, I want to talk about specifically overclocking your video card. It's become very popular to use the NVIDIA Precision X1 program, which is available on Steam or directly from your video cards manufacturer's website to overclock your card and get more performance out of it. Now, while there are a lot of cards today that are on the market that can take an overclock just fine, you can crank out a little bit more performance out of it. It's not something that you really want to do if you're already experiencing some problems in game with stability. Overclocking in and of itself is not a bad thing. However, it does introduce some inherent instability just like overclocking your CPU can. That same instability can come from your graphics card itself. So my suggestion is that you start by not overclocking your graphics card at all, running it on stock settings the way that it was designed to be run and see how it goes. I would bet you'd be surprised. In most cases, overclocking your card is not going to actually increase your frames by that much. And it's actually going to increase the probability that your card is going to actually throw errors in its RAM or in its video texture rendering memory. And what that means to you is that the game itself is either going to crash or you're going to see some desync or screen tearing, things like that. So again, I wouldn't mess with overclocking. Don't worry about it. Your graphics card will run just fine. In this next section, we're going to dive directly into PUBG and take a look at some in-game settings. We want to talk about how you can get the most out of your PC hardware and how to get the most specifically out of your video card and your hard drive. The overall goal with these settings is to find a balance between performance and appearance because those two things are always going to be at odds. There are a couple of easy wins along the way and there are a couple of things that are completely subjective. They're going to look either good to you or they're going to look bad to you, but they all have an effect on your PC hardware. Let's get started. Now, once you load PUBG, you're going to get into the settings menu and you're going to click on graphics. There's an easy win. This is an easy thing that it's often overlooked. And it goes along with earlier in the video when I was talking about making sure that your monitor and windows are both optimized to get the most frames out of your monitor and video card setup. Now, this setting is max FPS. Right now, I've got mine set to 144 because I have a 144 megahertz gaming monitor. So I have mine set specifically to match my monitor. There are a couple settings here. You have unlimited, which means that your graphics card and CPU as a combo will work as hard as it can to deliver as many frames as possible to your monitor. There's also display based, which is also essentially locking it to 144 megahertz or 144 FPS, just like I did manually. Now I want to take a second and talk about why you may not want to have unlimited selected. You may think, I just want to have as many frames as possible. Let's just go as hard as we can. But you might not want that because if you are rendering more than 144 frames per second to your monitor, 
you're really not going to notice the difference for all practical purposes. And because of that extra burden that's being placed on your graphics card and your CPU, you're really just taking away from other areas of the game engine itself. And so I always either would recommend you set it to display based if you don't want to get into specific tweaking, or you can do a custom value that matches your monitor or slightly less depending on your personal preference. The next setting I want to talk about is the lobby FPS cap. This really doesn't matter. You're not doing anything. You're just in the lobby. I always set mine hard to 60 and just leave it there because it doesn't really matter what's going on in the lobby. You don't have to worry about this. There's not really a lot of tweaking with this setting, but if you're wondering because it's there, just leave it at 60. I want to take a few minutes now and talk about what we refer to as aesthetic or purely view based kind of settings. And what we're talking about here is these settings really just affect the way that the game looks. And you have to understand when you mess with these settings specifically, you're shifting load either from your CPU to your GPU and all systems are going to be a little bit different depending on what kind of video card you have, depending on what kind of CPU you're actually running. So the basic theory is with anti-aliasing, post-processing, shadows, textures, effects, foliage, and view distance, the lower the setting, the better the performance. But that's not always necessarily true because there are times at which these settings get rendered on either your GPU or your CPU. And there are times where in, when they're set in the medium or mid range, you're actually shifting load from your graphics card back to your CPU itself. The only way to tweak this specifically for your system and find the sweet spot for all of these individual settings, which we consider to be purely aesthetic, is to have Task Manager running while you're playing the game and take a look at how much resource PUBG is using itself. And you can tell, hey, is my graphics card being pushed to 100% and my CPU's at 30? Maybe I need to lower these settings. If you lower anti-aliasing, if you lower textures and effects down, what's going to happen is some of that load is going to get shifted from your graphics card back to your CPU. And you'll notice that as you work through this particular section, you will find that balance with your graphics and with your CPU. And this is going to be different for everybody. This is one of those topics that it's very difficult to say, use these specific settings because it depends entirely upon what kind of graphics and what kind of CPU you have. So our suggestion here, you need to do some tweaking, find that happy medium. If you don't know what to do and you're worried about performance, set them all to low to start with and then work your way back up. The game will look a little bit different as you change those settings and you will be able to find that balance point between performance and aesthetics. Now let's get into settings that specifically affect your ability to see things in game. The first setting I want to take a look at is effects. This setting will let you see things like muzzle flashes, for example, when you're looking from a distance into a building, which helps you in spotting enemy players during the match. This is very important. And think about your graphics card as a resource that only has so many different things that can be consumed from it. And if there are only a couple of areas where you can consume resources on your graphics card and still run at an acceptable performance level, effects would be one of those areas that is worth increasing the setting higher and higher as long as the performance is tolerable to you in game. Foliage, this setting specifically, you can reduce all the way down to low. And what this does is it reduces the amount of grass and non-terrain featured cover and non-map building cover in, the, in a distance. And because the PUBG client itself will render players in as far as you can really realistically see them through a scope, 
you can actually have the foliage set to a lower setting, in which case what that is going to do is actually allow you to spot players easier at a distance. I would recommend that you start with this setting at very low. It'll just help you in-game spotting players at a distance. View distance is another setting that is kind of a tricky one and entirely subjective. If you turn view distance all the way down, it can help with spotting. However, view distance is what the game client uses to actually render in that rock or that building or that car or that hard cover that the player is hiding behind. So you may be shooting at somebody, but the hard cover that they're actually hiding behind hasn't rendered yet because your view distance setting is too low. And so unlike foliage, view distance is something that you have to really tweak and make sure that you're comfortable with. Because if you set your view distance to very low and your foliage to very low, you may be able to spot players. However, you may be shooting at a player in a long distance situation and you may be missing and you may not understand why, but the real reason might be that you're hitting an unrendered graphics object. So all that being said, view distance and foliage are settings you need to play with in game to find your comfortable spot between performance and between the game looking good and your ability to spot players not being hindered by it. To recap, all of the graphics settings in PUBG come down to two things. You're looking to create that balance between performance and aesthetics, and you're looking to be able to spot enemies easier. That's pretty much it. And you're gonna have to tweak each one of these settings a little bit on your own because your computer and your graphics card and your CPU combo with your RAM and your hard drive and your install of Windows, all of that comes into play with how well PUBG will render on your computer. The good news is you have a lot of flexibility in these settings and in our testing we've tested multiple different video cards and we have been able to get PUBG to run really well on all of them. So keep in mind it's all subjective, play around, find that sweet spot for you. I want to take a minute and look at the gameplay tab. There's two very important options here which have a large effect on the performance of your computer while you're playing PUBG. The first option is replay. Replay is an important tool for learning, but keep in mind that it also requires you to be recording the entire match from your perspective, which means that your hard drive is recording the entire match from your perspective. And if you don't have replay turned on, you can't go back and use the game viewer to watch the match that you just played. So if you're having trouble with performance, replay is an easy thing for you to turn off right away. Death Cam is also another replay tool. However, it's not quite as extensive. It's a learning tool to help you understand how you died. But it is also caching information on your hard drive in real time. So if you do absolutely need to squeak out some more performance, if you have a really low end system, you can turn off Death Cam as well. We do not recommend turning off death cam. It is an extremely important learning tool to see how you died. And so if there's any way that you can, turn down your graphics settings before you turn off death cam. However, if there's no other option, death cam will get you back some performance. One final quality of life thing that I wanna point out and I'm hoping that you're using, and if you've never done this, I wanna make sure that you understand that this option is there. And it's cloud saving. What cloud saving does is it saves all of your particular key bindings and graphic settings and everything gets saved to the cloud in Steam. And this allows you to back up your settings, which is the most important thing. But it also allows you to go to a friend's house and play on their computer if you can. You log into Steam, you log into PUBG, you log into cloud saving, you load your settings, boom, they're there, you're good to go. And like I said before, it allows you to back up your settings so that if you have to reinstall Windows on your PC and start over, you can reinstall PUBG for yourself, launch the client, go ahead, load your cloud settings, and boom, all of your customization is back there in PUBG. Well, that's it for the game client. All right, well, thanks everybody for watching our guide on how to optimize PUBG. 
To wrap this up, I'd just like to point out one specific and very important thing. Everything that we talked about in this video is free. All of these different options that you can change do not require you to buy anything with the exception of getting a client like Haste if you want to lower your ping time. All of the other options in Windows and in PUBG are all free for you to tweak. PUBG is an extremely configurable game. It runs on a wide variety of hardware and odds are that you can make it run well on your system. I'd like to remind everyone again that XP Media has an active Discord community that would love to have you be a part of it. Join our hardware talk section or our general chat section. We'd love to hear from you. If you'd like to leave a comment down below, please do. And lastly, once again, if you found this video useful, please hit the thumbs up. And if you like the content that we're putting out on XP Media, go ahead and drop the channel a subscribe. We'll see you in game.